Howdy folks, welcome to CS128 Honors. My name is Neil, and today I'm going to be talking a bit about how to get yourself set up with Rust, and uh, teaching you a little bit about how you're going to be working with Rust, how to set up a new project, and some commands you'll be using throughout the course. So first we're going to discuss more about the course, just some logistical stuff. Then we're going to explore the Rust environment, what it is, what tools you'll be using. And finally, we'll go over our first uh, Rust program, Hello CS128 Honors. So without further ado, um, you'll be seeing lectures every Tuesday and Thursday at around 6 p.m. We'll be posting them on our website, uh, the link is below, on our YouTube channel, and on Discord. So um, if you're on the website or you're on Discord, you'll be getting notifications about these all the time, um, yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday. You can view the schedule for lectures, homeworks, MPs, and the final project stuff uh, also on the website. The schedule is pretty much set in stone at this point. Um, we will not have any massive changes. If there are any changes, uh, they will only help you, we'll only push back deadlines, we will never move deadlines up forwards. Also, so we talked about the optional in-person discussion session on Discord. We've chosen a time for that, Mondays from 6 to 7.30. We're still working on a location. This will most likely be a room in CIF uh, in the engineering quad. In the discussion sections, we'll be introducing MPs. We'll be giving you guys some hints to get started. Um, we'll be reviewing some tricky content from lectures. Uh, and at the end, we'll have some time for a collaborative coding, give you guys time to work on homeworks together, and uh, maybe some Q&A or office hours. Okay, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm just gonna be going over all of your answers from homework zero. So it looks like all of you had uh, very fun breaks. So 22 of you traveled somewhere. Um, five of you went skiing. One of you went skiing in the Alps. I'm very jealous. Uh, 19 of you spent some time with family and friends. I hope all of you had a nice and relaxing break. Um, seven of you did some cooking and baking. I also did a lot of cooking and baking, ate a lot of cookies. Um, eight of you slept. Well, I hope all of you slept. Let's see what else. So some of your favorite programming languages. So it looks like Java is still a big winner with 30 of you. Python as well with 37 of you. Looks like Kotlin's making a nice run from CS124, with six of you there. Someone's a fan of basic, and that's interesting to see. Golang, Haskell, and a bunch of others. Let's see, favorite pastas. We got spaghetti, fettuccine, tagliatelle, penne, linguine. Um, there were a bunch of pasta sauces. Most popular was marinara, uh, bolognese sauce, a bunch more. What are you looking forward to in the course? So, meeting new friends, meeting new people, uh, the final project, learning a new skill some web3 and blockchain a rule the inst other instructor will be happy to see that but by far outstanding number 31 of you said learning rust which i'm happy to see okay so with that uh what is rust we've been talking about it in this video in the intro video what actually is it well rust is an iron oxide it's usually this uh, reddish brown color it's formed by the reaction of iron and oxygen in the catalytic presence. No, not what you're here for. <laughs> okay, so what is Rust the programming language? Rust is a multi-paradigm systems programming language. Let's break that down a little bit. So uh, when you hear multi-paradigm, this refers to the programming paradigms. You've probably heard of these before. Um, so programming paradigms categorize programming languages based on their features. And multi-paradigm means that a language supports several of these programming paradigms and doesn't restrict the programmer to a single paradigm. So this can be object-oriented programming. You've seen this before in Java, uh, even Python. There's functional programming. There's imperative programming. So in this class, we'll be teaching you Rust uh, a little bit through the lens of uh, ob uh, object-oriented programming and a little bit through some functional programming towards the end. What does systems programming mean? Well, so systems programming is uh, produces software that sort of provides services to other software and or are performance constrained. 
So your operating system, like the Mac operating system or Linux or Windows, um, those are systems programming. It's your operating system. Um, you can code an operating system in Rust. Uh, usually it's in C or some variant of that, but it is possible to code an operating system in Rust. Uh, anything that's sort of performance oriented, like um, uh, programming an airplane or a car or any of those sort of performance constrained systems also need systems programming languages. And it's possible to program those with Rust. Uh, systems programming is a little bit beyond the scope of the course. That requires some more advanced topics and more advanced knowledge that we will not get to. But uh, by the time you finish your CS degree or CS minor here at Illinois, you will have the knowledge to be able to go out and do that uh, by knowing Rust and knowing the other sort of background knowledge required for systems programming. So we will not be covering systems programming specifically. You can work on a systems programming project in your final project if you choose. Um, but that's sort of for you to explore. We'll be focusing on the programming paradigms and teaching you about Rust. Okay. Anyways, uh, systems programming sort of interface with the underlying hardware of the computer you're on. So this can lead to increased performance, um, so on and so forth. Okay, so how will we be learning Rust? We'll often refer to the Rust textbook in our lectures. We'll be leaving links on the slides and in the video descriptions. Um, you can Google the Rust textbook if you'd like to follow along. We'll be providing you links uh, for specific chapters you can read. Um, it's available free, so I recommend you go check it out in your spare time. Um, it's a great resource if you're sort of struggling with a, the nuances of a particular topic. Um, it comes with examples. Uh, this course is sort of different from the textbook in that it covers concepts uh, to sort of give you a preview of what you'll see in future Illinois courses. So. Uh, if you end up taking an architecture course or the CS341, CS233, um, any sort of parallel programming course and operating systems course, CS120 honors will cover Rust in a sense that gives you an advanced preview of what you'll see in future UAUC courses. Um, the Rust textbook is a resource. We use it. Uh, we do not completely rely on it, but it is there for you. Okay. So Rust should be installed in your CS128 virtual machines. I believe those are on Vagrant. You can test this whenever possible with by running cargo space dash capital V. Um, you so should see an output similar to this, cargo 1.57 or some other version. I believe we're up to cargo 1.62, so check that out. You can also install Rust on your own computer. Um, you can use this link below, rustlink.org slash tool slash install, or just Google install Rust and follow the instructions on the first link. Um, I believe these instructions change based on what you're on, whether that be your Windows, computer, Linux, or Mac. Um, but anyways, if you go to the link, you will see the instructions for your specific computer. I am on, I'm running Rust on my own computer. Um, you can do so as well, or some people like to do that in their CS128 virtual machine, completely up to you. Uh, all the Rust coding you'll be doing for the homeworks and MPs will be on Prayer Learn, but if you do want to use your own computer, uh, run code on your own computer, run your own tests, you can do that with this. Okay, so I mentioned Cargo. Well, what is that? Um, well, usually you'll see these cargo crates on shipping containers or in shipping yards. Uh, they're just large boxes where you can keep stuff and transport stuff. Sorry, is this getting old? <laughs> Cargo is Rust's build system and package manager. So a build system is something that compiles your code for you. Cargo compiles your Rust project so that it can be executed by your computer. Um, we'll go more into sort of what code execution actually is in a little bit. You might cover it in CS128, um, but more on that in a future lecture. Uh, technically, Rust C is Rust's compiler. Cargo just acts as um, a program that will call Rust C for you. It will handle all the packages, handle all of the extra sort of details for you so that you don't need to get into the nitty gritty. And package manager. So 
Modern projects rely on external libraries and packages. Uh, in Rust, those are called crates. A package manager handles those packages for you. It compiles them. It links them to your code. Um, it makes your life easier. C++ Notorial C does not have one. So anytime you're sort of trying to add in some other code into your C++ project, you will have to compile it yourself. Um, Cargo simplifies this. It compiles other packages for you and helps you integrate them into your projects. You'll be using the package manager functionality of Cargo in your final projects. Um, hopefully you use some really cool packages that do uh, some of the heavy lifting for you so you can end up making a beautiful project. Okay, so we'll be using Cargo to compile and execute your code, uh, to download and manage packages for you. Um, even though you will not be using it on Prairie Learn, when you submit your assignment and when you click Save and Grade, our autograder uses Cargo behind the scenes to test your code. Okay, so let's go through the process of um, creating some Rust code from scratch and compiling and running it. So I'm in VS Code, I have a terminal open, I have the Rust Analyzer extension running. Um, if you want some more details on how to get that set up, ask in Discord. So uh, we said Cargo is our tool for creating and compiling Rust. So to create a new project, I'm gonna say Cargo new lecture one. Lecture one will be the name of my new project. Okay, there you go. Created an application, lecture one you'll see this new lecture one folder up here. Um, in it, it contains a source folder and a cargo.tomo file. So cargo.tomo is where you sort of list all the metadata of your project. So the name of the project, the version, the edition of Rust you're using. Don't worry too much about these details. Um, and in the future, you'll list your pro uh, packages or crates that you want to depend on in this cargo.tomo file. All of this will be covered in a future lecture, so don't worry too much about the cargo.tomo file. We are focused on the Rust files. So, in source is a file called main.rs. Um, every sort of Rust program will have some type of uh, function main, and when you run it, it will call all of the code in it and you know run your little application. So uh, here it starts out by default with hello world. We're going to change that to hello CS128 honors. Go ahead and save that. So I'm going to move into the lecture one folder. And to run our code, uh, we can type cargo run. And cargo will compile that. And we see it prints out hello CS128 honors. Um, I should note, if you wanted to just build your code and not run it, you could write cargo build, and cargo will build your code for you. Um, if you wanted to check for syntax errors and only check for syntax errors without building, you can write cargo check. So on sort of larger projects that have a lot more uh, packages, a lot more things to compile, running cargo build to check for any syntax errors can take some time. If you just want to check for syntax errors, I recommend you run cargo check. If you want to build your project without running it, cargo build. And finally, to check your code for syntax errors, build it, and run it, you have cargo run. So you sort of have these three layers. Um, and each command does uh, multiple things under the hood. Okay. So it seems pretty easy, right? Well, uh, let's briefly go over them again. Um, so Cargo New, it creates your new Rust project for you. Cargo Build compiles and builds the code in your project. Cargo Run will build the code if it's not already built and run that code. Cargo Check just checks for syntax errors without compiling. Super, super useful if you're running, uh, if you're writing code on your own computer. Finally, Cargo Clean, something we did not do. It sort of clears the project of all compiled sources, um, basically wipes all compilation. So when you, you know, compile again, you start from fresh. This is useful when you're working with a team um, in case you sort of committed any compiled files and they don't work with your computer. Um, 
if there's any sort of weird bugs going on, just try Cargo Clean and uh, reset your workspace. All right, that's it for lecture one. Uh, that's a short one. You can usually expect lectures to be around 20 to 25 minutes. Um, but hopefully this is a nice little intro into Rust. And uh, yeah, I'll see all of you next Thursday.